Hi, my name is Orene Cosby, and I am a 63-year-old mother of three beautiful children, two girls, one boy, five lovely grandchildren, and I have been diagnosed with stage four metastatic lobular mammary carcinoma, or in other words, advanced breast cancer. That was given to me, that diagnosis was given to me on January the 11th, 2011. Actually, it was on the 14th uh, of January. I went in, they found breast cancer in a place that breast cancer never moves to, which was in the lining of the uterus. And I must say that getting the news, getting that diagnosis was very devastating and as a cancer survivor and I've learned to use the word survivor from the American Cancer Society because they declare that from the day that you get your diagnosis every day that you live you are a survivor and so yes although I may still be in treatments I am a survivor but on the 14th, I got that diagnosis, and uh, it took eight weeks for me to recover from the major surgery that I had just underwent before I actually went to the oncologist. But before I left the hospital, they did the mammograms and extensive testing and verified and confirmed that there was breast cancer, and they found a very small lump in the left uh, breasts. However, by the time I got to the oncologist and wonderful doctor at Texas Oncology here in Round Rock, Texas, and I just love my oncologist. He's wonderful. But he began to order various scans to uh, ensure uh, that maybe the cancer had not spread to other organs and then bone scans of the entire body to see if that breast cancer had moved uh, into the bones. Uh, and sad to say, when the reports came back, the reports showed that uh, throughout my entire skeleton, from my head down to my tiny toe, cancer appeared. And there was a very large area that lit up dramatically uh, on the left leg near my hip and it became crucial. Uh, my doctors thought that certainly this bone would break because the hole that the cancer had eaten there was of such size that it was uh, anticipated that that bone would break without me doing anything. But thank God, because of some of the nutrients I began to take after getting my diagnosis and after uh, doing some intense research on the internet to find out various things that I could possibly be doing even during my recovery time. By the time they decided to do the uh, surgery to put a rod into that leg, the bone had strengthened. And that was a good thing because my oncologist had already told me if that bone breaks, uh, it would just create more problems uh, with the cancer. So here I sit today, a year and a half or more from my diagnosis. I do have a rod in this left leg, but the bone began to grow back into that hole. And I changed a lot of my lifestyle of eating, changed a lot of the diet, and... Uh, much of the cancer markers reduced dramatically. But I want to say in this video how important it is for us to continue to make people aware, especially in the African American community, people of African American uh, descent. It must be spoken of, especially advanced breast cancer. There's many research, many things that are going on to raise funds for uh, researching the cures for all other types of cancers, but 
it seems as though the advanced stage breast cancer is not getting as much attention as many other areas. And because of this, because I am a survivor and I, I have the opportunity to talk to others that uh, are going through the very same things, there's several things that I've discovered. First of all, uh, we become, we seem to feel as though we are totally isolated. And there are many that don't have the support for the emotions and uh, the mental state and even spiritual support. And I have discovered how important, what a big impact it has on your physical being, your mental well-being, your emotional well-being, and your spiritual well-being. And so I have become a very strong advocate to reach out to others that are in the same diagnosis category that has been declared in my life. I thank God that I have a foundation in the Word of God that continues to encourage me and keeps my faith built, knowing that I have a refuge in my faith in God. But I don't throw the medical community aside because my treatments uh, are being very beneficial. But on the other side of that, many, just as myself, one of the treatments that was recommended for me was so extremely expensive. And I was already on disability, not having that secondary insurance. One shot a month was costing $4,500. And yes, Medicare took care of some of that, but that other part, the out-of-pocket, I could not afford. And because I could not afford it, I only was able to receive several months of, of that particular treatment. And oh my goodness, my oncologist uh, staff, they have been so helpful in searching out and looking and and trying to reach out to various organizations that would come to my rescue and help pay uh, that other portion. Well, we had to change treatments because that first treatment was so expensive, nobody would even pick up that other cost because we were talking about almost $500 a month, just my copay. Mm -mm. And I sat one day and I began to talk to the Lord, okay, God, you know, what am I going to do? Does this mean that I won't be able to be treated at all because I don't have that other out-of-pocket money? Uh, but thank God they were able to find another medication, another treatment that was pretty much the same, uh, but it was a different procedure, a longer procedure, and I have to endure that. But we were able to find uh, that kind of treatment that I could continue to get because of the cancer being so completely uh, uh, diffused throughout the bones. And so this video is to really try to make you aware of some of the needs that this particular category of patients or survivors uh, have to deal with the expenses of treatment and then um, the various uh, activities that could possibly go on to help keep these that are going through this battle, keep their minds more on a positive light and be encouraged. And it is because of this I push so hard to put on an event once a year that could possibly bring some hope, uh, some encouragement, allow this category of people to feel the love of other people that care about them as well as offering prayer. And that's what we call help. H-E-L-P. Because there are those that are not in an environment that gives positive light to their situation. And this particular, any debilitating disease can work on your mental state. You find yourself hopeless and, you know, looking at the diagnosis and listening to the prognosis. Uh, you feel like there's no use. What can I do? All I can do is just sit here and die. But my heart is to encourage 
uh, those that are going through debilitating diseases, to know that there are people that uh, love you and want to encourage you and give you a hope because uh, it is not the end. The end all is all in God's hand. Uh, yes, and that's where we find our faith. And the other thing that I found out that uh, when I begin to treat this earth body according to how God designed it to be functioning off of the nutrients in the earth, it makes a traumatic tremendous it makes a tremendous impact on your body and so my inspiration is my faith and my trust in my God not only my trust in God but my trust in his written word that keeps me inspired every day and the other thing that I have found out that the more I stay focused on trying to bring some hope and some help inspiration and encouragement to someone else it seems to bolster my immune system I call it my spiritual immune system and it keeps my mind not focused on the pain that I may have in my body yes I go through my pain management but when I'm not in pain I'm constantly trying to see how I can help somebody else and in the words of the old song that we have sung many years in the African-American culture, if I could help somebody as I go along in this journey, then my living will not be in vain. If I can help somebody to lift their minds and their emotions out of that pit of despair, to know that there is hope in Christ that my living will not be in.